in this lesson, we're going to learn how to order numbers and how to compare numbers, which basically means how to figure out which number is bigger and which number is smaller. And you've all played the game Tic-Tac-Toe. You have to draw two lines like this, and then another two lines like that, and then throw a bunch of X's and O's on, onto the chart over here, which is why they also call it X's and O's. And so interestingly enough, in some Asian countries, they call it wick whack wo Now, we're not going to play Tic-Tac-Toe, X's and O's, or wick whack wo we just need the game board. We're going to throw in the letters H-T-O. This is our H-T-O game board. The H stands for hundreds, the T for tens, and the O for ones. Now what we'll do is instead of throwing X's and O's on here, we're going to throw digits. We're going to throw numbers in there. Like for example, if I gave you the number 645, you would take all of these and put them in their proper place value. So you'd put the 6 in the hundreds, you'd put the 4 in the tens, and the 5 in the ones. And if I gave you another number like, let's say, 398, well you would likewise take all of those digits and throw them in their place values. So we have our game board set up like that. Now to figure out which number is bigger and which number is smaller, you have to understand two rules. And uh, I'm going to write them over here. We have rule number one and we have rule number two. Now the rule number one states that in any three digit number, in any three digit number, the number with the most hundreds is the bigger number. You got that? The number with the most hundreds is the bigger number, is the bigger number. So comparing these two numbers, 645, 398, this has 600s, this has 300s, this one's the winner. It wins. Now I know you're all begging to ask me the question, nine is more than four. You know what? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Nine is more than four, but you know what? You can't go to this section because the rule states that the number with the most hundreds is the bigger number. And the keyword is most Hundreds, not tens, not ones, but hundreds. So memorize that. Now, there are going to be cases where the hundreds are the same number. Like, let's change this around here. Let's, let's go like this. Let's change this number around a little bit. Let's call this a 6. So we'll change this number to 698. Now, the rule number 1 states that the number with the most hundreds is the bigger number. But look. The hundreds are the same. They're tied. So you know what we do in this case? Then we jump to the tens. So you compare the tens, and now the rule states that the number with the most tens is the bigger number. And in this case, this one wins. But now what if the tens are tied? Like, let's say we have a case like this is also a 4. Yeah, that, was, that wasn't too good. Let's do this. A 4 here, and let's make that into a 4. Now, you could probably figure out what this rule is going to stay, but if the tens are tied, then and only then do you jump over to the ones and compare them. So in this case, this number would win because the, the hundreds are tied, the tens are tied. So you have a tie over here, you have a tie over here. So then you have to compare the ones, and 8 is more than 5, so the bottom number wins. So let's get this down on paper. If they're the same, so if it's a tie, then you go to the tens. And if the tens are tied, so if the tens have a tie, they're the same number, then and only then do you actually go and compare the ones. Now let's take a look at a couple definitions that appear. We have the word ascending and descending. And what I'd like you to do is draw a couple mountains. We have a mountain here and we have a mountain there. And what we have is the word ascending means you're going up the mountain. You're going up. So you're going from the small numbers first. And then you write the big numbers last. Okay, you're going from small to big. Descending, you can remember with D for down. You're going down the mountain. So you're going, you're starting with the big numbers. You have to write them first, the biggest ones. And then the smallest numbers have to go last. Now let's try this activity. Everyone, either you're like probably sitting at home in front of your computer or you're sitting in my classroom watching this on my big screen. What I'd like you to do is stand beside your chair. So everyone should be standing beside their chair right now. And ascend now to the top of your chair. So you've all ascended, I'm assuming. Now what you should do is go back and descend back to the ground. So you've all descended to the ground, hopefully. And you are back to where you started out. So you've ascended and you've descended. So we're going to figure out which of these numbers is larger. So what I'll do is I'll start by making the HTO squares like this and then putting in the numbers like that. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's enough. That's enough. Let's get back on track here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we have 499, 612. Remember the rule. The number with the most hundreds is the larger number. So start in the hundreds. 
so we have a four over here and we have a six over, we have a four here, we have a six here. This is automatically the winner. There's no need to jump to the tens and the ones. So this is the bigger number. Here's the next one. We have five hundreds and five hundreds. The number with the most hundreds is the bigger number, but it's a tie. So what do we do? We jump to the tens. The number with the most tens is the winner. And this one has more tens than this one. So 528 is the bigger number. There's no need to check the ones. How about the next one? There's uh, 283, and then we have 2 star 9. So we don't, we don't really know what's under the star. It could be any number from 0 to 9. We're not sure what it is. So let's follow the rule. The number with the most hundreds is the bigger number. Here, this has two hundreds, and this has two hundreds. It's a tie. So what does the rule say? Jump to the tens. This number has eight, and this number, we're not sure what it is. So what do we do? We jump to the ones? I don't think so. You're not going to jump to the ones unless you're sure it's a tie in the tens. Remember, only if it's a tie do you jump to the ones. So you know what we do? We write, not sure. That's all. Just not sure. We're not sure which number is bigger. How about the next one? We have 374 and we have 4 star 0. The rule says that the number with the most hundreds is the bigger number. Let's check the hundreds. This one has 4 of them. So it's automatically the winner. Why don't we check the tens though? Why don't we jump over to the tens and say, oh, we're not sure because there's a star over here. Well, you know what? We don't have to check the tens because we have a winner already. It's in the hundreds. So 400, whatever this number is, doesn't really matter. This is automatically the bigger number. Now, these ones here, I'm not going to make an HTO chart. I know I could do it in an instant, but I'm not going to. I'm going to show you another way of doing it without it. So all you got to do is start by underlining the digits. So you have 400s here and you have 400s here. It's a tie. So what do we do? We check the tens. So let's check the tens. We have eight tens over here, eight tens, and we have seven tens over here. We have a winner. This is it. Eight is bigger than seven. It wins. How about the next one? We have five hundreds here, and we have star hundreds. We're not sure what that number is. It's covered up. We don't know what it could be. So is it a tie? I don't know. Is, is this 5 bigger than this? I don't know. It's covered up. I can't tell. Is the 5 smaller than this one here? I don't know either. Like This number's covered up. I, I can't see it. So you know what? We're stuck here. It's like we're, we're in a big pile of muck and we can't get out of it. So we, again, right over here, we're unsure. Well, what about this one? We have 600s and we have 600s. It's a tie. So what do we do? We check next door like that. We have a star here and we have a star here. Does that mean it's a tie? Yeah, right? No, it doesn't mean it's a tie. We don't know what these numbers are. They're covered up. Which of these two numbers is bigger? Well, I can't see them. I, I don't know which is bigger or which is a tie. So what do we do? We check the we check the ones, right? We go and say, oh, nine is bigger than two, so this wins. No, you can't do that because you're stuck in this pile of muck. You can't really go next door because you're only allowed to do that if it's a tie and we can't see if it's a tie. So again here, we're unsure. And the last one, we have 600s and we have 600s. We have 9 10s and we have 8 10s. We have a winner already. No need to check the number in the 1s value. This one wins. So here we have two questions. One of them says, arrange the following numbers in descending order. And the other one says, arrange it in ascending order. So we, again, start by making our tic-tac-toe square. And again, it says descending order. What does that mean? We're going down the mountain. We start with the big numbers first, and then we end with the small numbers. So that's easy enough. The number with the most hundreds is the biggest number. And this one has the most hundreds, so it's going to go first. It's in first place, the largest number. So we can cross it out. We're finished with it. How about the next biggest number? Well, the biggest number out of the remaining numbers is the one with the most hundreds, but it's a tie. So what do we do? We jump to the tenth section. So we have to go to the tens. And we say the number with the most tens is the next biggest number. So we have a 5 over here and we have a 7 here and it's bigger than all the other tens. So 875 is next place. 875. So we can cross it out. Now we need the next biggest number. We have the most hundreds wins, but it's a tie. So the most tens wins, but it's a tie. So what do we do? We go to the ones. We have 9 ones here and we have 7 ones here. So this is the bigger number. 850. 9. And we can cross it out. And then the smallest number would be 857. Like that. And we're done this question. It's in descending order. Biggest number, smallest number. Now the next question states ascending order. So we're going up the mountain. We have to start with the small numbers first, the smallest one, and end with the biggest one. 
So again, we'll make our chart. We'll throw in all the numbers. And now the rule states we need the well, we need the smallest number. So the rule states the number with the most hundreds is the biggest number. But we don't want the biggest number. We want the smallest number. So we say the number with the least amount of hundreds is the smallest number. So the least amount of hundreds is going to be 2. But it's a tie. So what do we do? We jump to the tens. So the number with the least amount of tens is the smallest number in between these three numbers here, between these three over here. The one with the least amount of tens is 4. So we have 248 is the smallest number. So we can cross it out. Now we need the next smallest number. So the rule states that the number with the least amount of hundreds is the smallest number. So it's a tie again. So we jump to the tens. And it's a tie again. So we go to the ones. We have four ones here. And we have five ones over here. Which is smaller? Four ones. So we go 284 is next. Now we know 285 will be third, the next smallest. And now we have to decide between these two numbers, which is the smaller one. So we have three hundreds and three hundreds. It's a tie. We have seven tens and seven tens. It's a tie. But then we have four ones and nine ones. So that's going to be the smaller number. 374. We can cross it out. And then this is going to be the largest number. 379. So here we have ascending order. We have small here. And we have the biggest over here. So in the first question, you should have realized that, well, the answer for one thing is unsure. Because we start in the hundreds, it's a tie. We go to the tens, and we don't know which number is bigger or smaller or tied. Because this one is splattered on, it's covered, we don't know what it is. So we're unsure and we're stuck. So the next question, we have a 400s and we have 900s. There's no need to go further. We know which number is bigger. It's this one. In the third question, we have 300s and 400s. Again, we're sure which number is bigger, the one with the most hundreds. So this one is the winner. There's no need to check what's after it and compare. There's no need to. In the in the fourth question, we have 400s and 5 or sorry, we have 500s and 500s. It's a tie. So we jump to the next zone the tens we we jump next door right here and we have nine tens and we have over here only seven tens so this one is automatically the winner no need to go further into the ones so these stars are just there to fool you in the third in the next question the fifth one we have 300s and 300s tied we have to jump next door we have seven tens and we have seven tens it's also a tie so what do we do we go to the ones and when we do that we notice that we don't know what it is. It's not a tie. Don't think, oh, we, they both have stars, that it's a tie. We're not sure what these numbers are. This one could be bigger. Maybe this one is bigger. Maybe they're tied. We're not sure. So we write unsure. And the last question, you should have gotten 400s, 300s. There's no need to go further. This one wins. So for the second example, again, we have two parts. Read it really carefully, and then we'll come back and check our answer in a moment. Okay, we're back. Write all the combinations. So we want all the combinations. We want combinations of numbers you can make with the digits 4, 5, and 6. That's part 1. So we could start with the 4, and then we'll have a 5 and a 6 left over, which we can write out. Or we can write the 4 and flip the 5 and the 6 around. So now we're done with the 4. We can go to the 5 and start with that next, and then we'll have a 4 and a 6 left over. We can write them out. Or we can flip them around and get five, six, four, just switch the numbers at the end around. Or we could start with the six instead, and we can get six, four, five. Or we can write the six again and flip the four and the five, and, and we're done the question. Great job, everybody. We're done this lesson. We have one more to go, and then we've completed the chapter. So keep up the hard work, and I'll see you in the last lesson.